Hello everyone, welcome back to Anonymous World. Hope you all are doing well. So today is December 23rd and day 23 of Advent of Cyber 3rd edition is out. Let's see what we have in day 23. Okay, so day 23 is Blue Teaming Power Shell Elf Magic. Okay. So slowly we are moving towards Christmas. Christmas is coming soon. So let's see. Deploy the virtual machine attached to this task. It will be visible in the split screen view once it is ready. If you don't see a virtual machine load, then click the so split view button. Okay, let's start our machine. Okay, now one of the administrators with access to the Elf Dome defense system realized that his password file was missing from his desktop. Without the password, he will not be able to log into the mission control panel. PD suspects that perhaps perhaps one of the previous phishing attempts was successful. Okay, Skiddy jumps into the action. Now we need to inspect the event logs to determine what has occurred and see if we can retrieve the password from the deleted text file. Okay, so learning objectives. Analyze Windows event logs to understand actions performed in an attack. Recover key artifacts in unencrypted web communications and utilize PowerShell scripting to recover a deleted artifact. Okay, so first of all, let's see what is PowerShell. So official definition of PowerShell per Microsoft is, uh, it is a cross-platform task automation solution made up of a command line shell, a scripting language, and a configuration management framework. It runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. It is a beneficial tools, tool for Windows administrator to automate day-to-day -day tasks. Okay, so a link is given here. You can read more about PowerShell here. So now as defenders, we can audit commands run in the PowerShell console on each workstation. This is known as PowerShell logging. So when a PowerShell command or script is run, the activity is logged into the Windows event log system. And uh, we can, we can uh, analyze them later. So many event logs are generated in a Windows system, but the logs we care about are specific to PowerShell. Okay, so all the events log are categorized by providers such as uh, Microsoft Windows PowerShell. Each has specific event IDs to identify particular events or actions. The event IDs of interest for us in this investigation are 4103 and 4104. Okay, so these two event IDs are important for us for this particular investigation. So typically we will use event viewer to view event logs locally on our Windows system. But we installed a nifty tool called full event log view to help make this a painless experience. So when you start the tool, it will display a large number of event logs. Fret not, uh, search is your friend. Okay, so <clears throat> this is our tool, full event log view. Open the advanced options to start your search. The events of interest on this endpoint took place a few weeks ago, especially during the week of November 11, 2021. So use the below search criteria to get you started. Also, we can search uh, based on string value and we know that there is a web traffic involved in the tag. So a good keyword can be HTTP. So additional rooms are given here. Investigation in Windows 2.0, investigating Windows 3.x and PowerShell for pen testers. You can check all three rooms. And if you wish to access virtual machine via RDP, you can use the given credentials. The virtual machine may take up to 3 minutes to load. Okay, so our, our machine is loaded. Let's uh, view it in full screen. Okay, so let's go there. This is our tool. Okay. Now open the advanced options to start your search. Okay. The events of interest on this endpoint took place a few weeks ago, especially during the week November 11th. So let's see. Okay, let's see. So only events in the specific specified time range. Okay, local time. Let's see what we need to change. Okay, so it's month date here, I guess. 11, 10, 2021. And the time is 1005 p.m.
okay to 11 12 2021 okay and then exact same time okay now we need to see only specified event ids which were which were 4103 and 4104 so let's specify that okay let's see if we need to do something else okay so show only the specified providers powershell okay let's enter powershell okay so only events with specified event description strings okay so we need to select http okay so i guess we are done let's click okay okay so now you can see we are seeing results uh, for event id is only 4103 and 4104 Okay, so there are total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven results. Let's see what we need to do next. Let's see our questions. Okay, so what command was executed as Elf McNeely to add a new user to the machine? Let's see. Okay, let's start with the first one. Okay. You can see many, de many details are given here. Like severity, host name is console host, host version is given, host application is given, which is powercell.exe, then ID. Let's see, okay, I can find any command which is which can be used to add new user. Let's see the second one. Okay, a value is given here, which is pretty big. Let's see if something else is there. Okay, there is nothing. Let's see the fourth one. Okay, a uh, file is being um, called. So we are seeing content of uh, password.txt. So someone used someone try to see the password.txt file what's there okay let's see if something else is there okay the file was deleted later let's check the next one okay something is being downloaded you can see the command wget uh, here let's see Okay, one CVE is given, CVE 2021-1675, which is Sprint Nightmare. Okay, some repositories are given, John Hammond, then Caleb Stewart, they, is a, they are author. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we find something here with command which is used to add new user okay let's see the repository if, if we find something there let's copy this okay Okay, so it is a critical remote code execution and local privilege escalation vulnerability dub print nightmare. POC exploits have been released for the remote code execution capability. Okay, so this PowerShell script performs local privilege escalation with the print nightmare attack technique. So this has been tested on Windows Server 2016 and 2019. Okay, so a new uh, usage is given below. Add a new user to the local administrators group by default. So first module is being imported then invoke nightmare is used 
which is used to add admin and which is used to add user okay so i think this must be our answer invoke nightmare this command is executed as milk fle to add a new user to the machine okay let's try okay so that was our correct answer let's see what is in the hint okay research about the cv so you search about this cv more and see what things you can do with what things you can do here okay now what user executed the powershell file to send the password.txt file from administrator desktop to a remote server okay let's see let's see the last one okay something is being downloaded here okay let's see okay so uh content was someone was trying to get the content of password.txt okay let's see encrypted data invoke web request okay post method was used then again wget is used okay part c users elf mac really desktop let's see one let's see this one okay host name control host Okay, nothing's here. Okay, username is given tbfc aoc23 admin. Can the user be admin? Let's try this. Okay, so it was the correct answer. Now, what was the IP address of the remote server? What was the port used for the remote connection? Format IP port. Let's see. I think we saw the IP somewhere. Okay, it was in four one zero four, I guess. Okay, so it's a ten dot ten dot one forty eight dot ninety six, and the port number is four three two one. Let's see if we are correct. Okay, so let's see the next question. What was the encryption key used to encrypt the contents of the text file sent to the remote server? Okay, so now we need to look for an encryption key. Let's see where can we find the encryption key. Okay, expand archive. Encrypted data, okay. Convert from secure string, secure string, secure string. Okay, key is uh, dollar key. Okay, I think this looks like, uh, this looks like a weird string. Let's see if this one is our encrypted string. Okay, so we are correct. Now, what application was used to delete the password.txt file? Okay. It was here down below. So, sdelete.exe. Uh, let's see if this was used. Okay, so we are correct. Okay, so the inbuilt machine was getting reconnected again and again. So, now I am with my attack box. Let's go to the question again. So, what is the date and timestamp the log shows that password.txt was deleted? Okay, let's see. Okay, we can't see any timestamp here. Let's see if we have an, another log. Okay. We don't think the time is given here. Let's see. Update the advanced options to search for the deleted file. Okay, so let's update the our advanced option. Okay, so okay. So let's update our advanced option. Let's search for deleted. Let's see if we get something. Okay, so now we have only three results. Let's see. Okay, can see a one timestamp 11 to 2018, 5 13 a.m. Okay, then we have two more is for information, converted ping data. Okay, again, host name. Then, okay, some it is about some archive file. Can't see password.txt. 
Okay, let's try here password.txt. Okay, so we have three files. Let's see its confirmation. Okay, we already saw that earlier. Okay, so here the command is used delete.exe. Let's see its time. Okay, so it's uh, 11th November 2021, 729.27. Let's see if this is the correct one. Okay. 11, 29 minutes, 27 seconds, then PM. Okay, so that was the correct answer. Now, what were the contents of the deleted password.txt file? Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see the HTTP again. Okay, so I didn't think we found any message earlier. Okay. Let's see what's in the hint. Edit, edit this decrypted.ps1 with the previously found encryption key and the encrypted value. Execute decrypted.ps1 in PowerShell. Okay, let's see. Let's go to the desktop. Okay, one decryptor file is here. Let's uh, edit this. Okay, Windows PowerShell, I see. Okay, so it's asking for one key and the encrypted text here. Okay, so enter key here. We have the key from earlier question. Let's see. So, okay, so this is our key. Now we need to enter the encrypted text. So, now where we can find the encrypted text? So, in one log file, we saw some. We saw a file where value was given, which is this. Let's try this. Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay. Now let's see if this. Okay, now let's execute. Okay, in input string was not correct. I think I made a mistake while copying this string. Let's copy this string again. Okay, copy. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so we got the message, mission control, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Let's see if this is the correct one. Okay, we'll copy this. Let's see. Okay, so that was the correct answer. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. So that's all for day 23. And that's all for this video too. I will see you tomorrow in day 24.